Hello, and welcome to today's Saratech Enablement Session. My name is Andrea Hall, and I'm the Customer Relationship Manager here at Saratech, and I'll be your host today. And with that, I am going to go ahead and pass it right over to Dave. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, as was mentioned, hello and welcome to the NX uh, model-based definition overview. Uh, my name is Dave Wingrave, as, as mentioned, and I'm the NX product manager for model-based definition at Siemens Digital Industry Software. Um, more and more companies are, are today are adopting model-based definition strategies to streamline their process and help them to be more competitive. So, this session is really an opportunity to provide you with an overview um, and highlight some of the uh, some of the factors that are driving. Uh, the need around model-based definition, as well as demonstrate some of the latest innovations made in NX. So, so what's driving the need for model-based definition? Well, there's competitive pressure that's constantly increasing as more players enter the global market and everybody's raise, uh, raising their um, productivity to get ahead. There's also engineering workforces that are getting younger and less centralized, and uh, they're driving towards outsourcing and, and uh of the engineering work to a younger, cheaper workforce, which means that you can't always rely on experience to interpret the correct path. Uh, there's cost reduction initiatives that mean that many firms are being forced to reduce their engineering resources at the same time as the demands on those resources are increasing. Uh, there's cost of materials and labor that occurs outside the engineering effort that is rising as well. And there's legacy data that is a reality that many firms still need to deal with. So, you know, some of this is 2D, some of it is 3D data from older outsourced, outsupported systems, and, and some of it is 2D drawings that only exist as hard copies. So model-based definition really is um, a key driver uh, or has become a key to helping to overcome some of these challenges and uh, achieve market success. And this is, this is uh, being felt across all industries. There's lots of great quotes out there that talk about model-based definition. This is one from the Aberdeen Group and reinforces the value of model-based definition strategies um, that the strategy provides to many companies. So let's talk a little bit about at a high level what is model-based definition and, and the evolution of the documentation process as, as we see it. Uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see that uh, there's a traditional drawing-based approach where there's a single source of truth, which was the drawing. And so depending on how far back you, you go, it could have been a hand drawing or it could have been created using primitive CAD tools. Um, so, you know, CAD systems have, of course, have evolved to include the automation of a drawing uh, from a 3D model. This is the model-centric approach, the second option on there. Um, and, uh, th and this could be with or without associativity to the model. Model-based definition, the third approach on there, which is commonly referred to as MBD in the industry, is a practice of producing a complete digital definition of a product within a 3D model. And it focuses on ensuring that the 3D model contains all the information needed to define the product in an annotated and organized manner, thus re replacing the traditional drawing. So in its basic form, it's geometry, it's product and manufacturing information, or PMI, and metadata. So what is PMI? Well, PMI is is uh, contributes that model-based definition by conveying information such as GD&T, 3D annotation, surface finish, material specifications. It's that annotation that's placed on the model. There's another uh, another evolution there, which is really the, the process of reusing the 3D model uh, and the model-based definition in downstream consumers, which is referred to as model-based enterprise. So that's really what most people are working towards um, throughout this evolution. There's lots of uh, lots of charts that are out there that talk about sort of where people are or allow you to define where you are within that uh, within that maturity level. So this is one that I'm, I'm referencing here. So you can sort of chart where you are in terms of a level. So whether you're model centric and whether you're you have got a connectivity with downstream applications or you're primarily producing drawings and native CAD models, you can sort of see what uh, what level of maturity you are within that uh, model-based definition, model-based enterprise environment. And again, these are these are available uh, widely available by many many vendors. So. Uh, you know, model-based definition might sound like a new concept, but in reality, you know, Siemens has been has a long history of providing solutions in this space. Uh, we've got solutions that were introduced back in the early 90s, a, a decade before the 3D annotation standards were first released. 
but I think it's important to recognize that, you know, as a CAD vendor, we were very proactive in this in this process and engaging in the 3D annotation uh, standards. So, you know, we had uh, representation in terms of uh, chairman of the original ASME Y14.41 committee that was founded back in 19. 19- 98, as well as um, vice chairman of the ISO committee for Ender 3D annotation. So we uh, we see this as, we saw this as being an extremely important part of um, of driving the standards and uh, and really developing what is now the model based definition. So you know we support all of the international standards. It's the third international standard, Japanese standard JADA, and we recognize that and and support that standard also. And we're off actively engaged with customer drawing to model-based processes um, and uh, translators for over for over 20 years. Uh, model-based. Think... Yeah. I'm sorry, we have our first question. Oh, sure. Uh, could you explain the acronym of TDP? Uh, T- I'm actually going to touch on a little later on, but uh, technical data package. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'll touch on that a little later on this presentation. Great. Great. I think what's really important, I guess, from this is that, you know, it's strategic to Siemens. We're committed to delivering a high value, high quality solution. So, you know, at Siemens, we're focused on, you know, helping our customers achieve their goals. So we have the tools that break down the barriers to innovation and embrace the future. The NX product line itself includes solutions that address mechanical, automation, process, and electronic requirements. Uh, model-based definition is a key component and contributes to that overall NX vision by providing a solution to capture and leverage information across multiple disciplines. Some of the key strengths of the NX solution include uh, a comprehensive and proven tool set, making NX the most productive modeling environment, the ability to combine electrical and electronic design with mechanical, advanced techniques like generative design and validating as you go, utilizing additive manufacturing to uh, create designs that were previously impossible, being able to bring your simulation and manufacturing teams into the design process at an earlier stage, a solution for collaborating effectively with easy access to critical information. And, um, um, you know, this presentation will highlight the contributions that were made in the area of model-based definition that support this overall vision. So let's talk about the application that, uh, that is driving model-based definition within NX. So model-based definition is powered by an application called NXPMI, or NX Product and Manufacturer Information. And this application captures and communicates design manufacturing intent by enabling simplified annotation of a 3D model or assembly. So it streamlines the, uh, the authoring process and reduces the time spent on engineering documentation and late changes to the design. And there's only one source of dimensional tolerance information for the part. Uh, annotated models are easier to visualize and easier to understand the 2D drawings, and they remove the cost and effort to manually reproduce drawings and provide this dynamic interrogation uh, and collaboration across the enterprise. <laughs> oh, yeah, I jumped ahead a little bit. I apologize mm-hmm. for that. Hit the keyboard. Uh, mm-hmm. They're also easier to view uh, on electronic devices such as recognized tablets, uh, companies that rely on 3D annotation and fewer change orders and, uh, and less scrap. And uh, it also supports. Um, uh, the reduction in downstream errors and scrap by minima, or by maximizing downstream u- reuse, and I'll touch on that a little later on. There's also a solution uh, around converting to, to PMI, which significantly reduces the cost of converting from a drawing-based process to uh, using models with, with PMI. So uh, the solution capabilities. NX PMI is an advanced tool set for capturing and associating the design and manufacturing requirements directly under the model or assembly, as I mentioned. And this information is available for reuse in other applications. So over the next few slides, what I'm going to do is touch on some of the capabilities that exist within the XPM BMI application. So for, uh, to start with, the dimensioning side of things. So we offer a comprehensive dimensioning annotation capabilities that allow you to, to fully define the geometry and tolerances on your design. Uh, the annotation interface is easy to use, intuitive, and very natural in terms of working in a 3D environment. What we've tried to do is... Um, the, on the, when you're working in a drafting environment, an extracting environment versus a, a 3D environment, we've tried to maintain the same user interface and, and display of those, those commands, interaction with those commands, so that as you transition from a 2D environment to a 3D environment, you have that familiarity as you're working. So we also allow you to rev, uh, leverage content that already exists in, within the context of the command. So for instance, when you're developing features, 3D, uh, 3D feature or models, um, we are able to extract that, those dimensions and be able to pull those and generate PMI from them. 
uh, add the tolerance information and, and develop uh, semantically rich content that's uh, standards compliant. There's also a concept called supplemental geometry in the, con in the context of this 3D annotation standards. So this, this involves things like uh, center lines and regions uh, as a way to designate an area for special purposes. So this is an area that, uh, again, is a, a very important part of documenting your designs in the context of 3D and providing reference content that you can uh, you can leverage, and uh, and so um, this this really augments the design process. Uh, we offer a number of different workflow related uh, concepts and functionality that's it's available in the, in the context of the application. So things like the ability to section. Uh, there's multiple different types of section views that you can indicate. There is um, a cross-hatch based on material, so getting into the details now. But uh, what we've done is we've tried to simplify the process as much as possible, provide as much level of automation, um, and also comply with the standards. So the standards talk about a thing called a cutting plane symbol, which is similar to a 2D section line in a drawing, but it's in the context of a 3D environment. So again, we adhere to that very nicely. There's also the concept of being able to mirror model view or PMI and a concept of model views. A model view is just a container for the uh, the PMI objects for displaying and organizing. And then we have a concept called wave linker, which is allows you to, to link uh, PMI from one model to another model. So you could you can start to build relationships and, and connectivity between your models. Uh, there's a number of tools around search and reporting. So as you start to develop your models and as you start to add content, rich content on your models, we offer a number of tools to be able to quickly find and locate, interrogate the models uh, for particular PMI objects. Or you know, I may want to search for all parts within a certain tolerance or all features within a certain tolerance, and uh, and and I can certainly do that as by way of search. Um, there's also a reporting mechanism that allows you to generate things like a spreadsheet or other forms of reports uh, with all of your PMI content on there. So you might want to use those for inspection or FAI, FAI um, type analysis going uh, downstream. So again, quickly diagnose uh, complex models and uh, interrogate them. There's a concept called security markings within the 3D annotation standards, and this is a way to be able to provide standards compliant messages or messages around security control within the context of the model. So what you can do is you can have the user recognize that there are proprietary or um, government particular information that, uh, that they need to acknowledge as part of that, uh, that process going in. Uh, I talked about this briefly, but this is a concept called convert to PMI. So this was an industry first and, and recognized as a differentiator for us within NX, which is uh, a solution around automatically converting drawing views and objects to model views and PMI objects. And uh, this was done really around the focus around legacy drawing data. So the ability to, to automatically you know, um, transition some of that 2D content into, into a 3D environment. Uh, where it makes sense. So uh, certainly the model-based definition is not about taking everything that existed on a drawing and putting it into 3D, but where it makes sense, um, those, uh, those dimensional, those tolerance information um, in order to be able to, uh, to um, organize and, and define your model. It's highly customizable, allows for options to uh, transition any portion of a drawing uh, where there's an equivalent capability in the 3D environment. And there's batch processing for larger amounts of objects. So this is a really nice tool to be able to, uh, to help with that transition. What we found is many customers that, that are making that transition have found this to be very useful as a way to be able to, to, uh, to, to work within the context of a 3D environment. There's also a, a function called PMI Compare that allows you to compare PMI and model view data between two native NX parts or two revisions in the context of manage, manage mode. It's fully integrated within the application. It provides a, a comparison navigator and uh, visual interrogation. We have a concept called 3D, uh, 3D, uh, or sorry, HD 3D um, that allows you to provide visual links and tags on your model quickly and easily identify those changes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop in and just show you a quick example of that. So uh, in this example, you can see we've got a compare mechanism uh, on the ribbon bar within the context of the NXPMI application. I'm sorry, jumping right into this and showing you. I'm looking at a model, of course, with PMI that exists uh, on it. I didn't indicate a couple of different revisions. In this case, there's a revision A and a revision B. We automatically do a split screen um, 
for you and we show you the source and the comparison part, you can work in a uh, in a in a full screen environment to minimize the uh, dialogues on your interface. And what you can see here is you've got um, a number of different display options. So depending on the way the part is laid out, uh, you can specify whether you want to do a uh, horizontal or, or vertical alignment, as well as uh, indicate where the source part is located. There is a comparison uh, navigator that's presented that shows you all of the, the differences, the additions, the uh, deletions, as well as the changes between the source part and the comparison part. And as you can see, there's some visual indication by way of um, some tags, the, uh, the symbols that appear on the screen. As you drag across those HD3D tags, we give you a, a tool tip that gives you some indication of what that change is. So we can see whether something's been added, removed, or what have you. You can also click on the navigator to be able to, uh, to get a tool tip to get information, or you can go in and hone in and, and find exactly where that change took place. So that allows you to navigate directly to it, there's a synchronize option. So as I start to rotate my model around, I can see in both views where that change took place. And as I, as I do that, I'm able to identify those changes. So for instance, if I wanted to, to locate something like the radial dimension, I wanted to see what actually took place. I can say that I want to go to the model view where that, uh, assume, where that change was what happened. In this case, uh, this active model view, I can see that there's appended text that changed you can see right there between the two that the two X has been uh, removed from the uh, from the other revision, as well as the associative objects. You can see it highlights two on one view and, and one on another. So there's the change immediately identified by way of graphic interface. You can also filter on those changes. So for instance, if I just wanted to see a particular change, I could easily find that. This is a pretty simple part, a simple change. You can imagine if this was an assembly or if this had um, several model views with um, lots of PMI on it, uh, this would allow you to very quickly and easily identify those changes. So dynamic, interactive, and uh, easy, to, easy to locate that information. You can also go and generate a report. So you may want to generate a report and show that in a browser interface. Um, you can generate it based on a spreadsheet. So you can export to a spreadsheet, or you can generate a full report, which gives you a, a complete and utter breakdown of all of the changes, as well as not only what, what change took place, but what are the details of that change. So that gives a more, more comprehensive uh, report that you can, uh, you can use to analyze. So. Um, I mentioned, I touched on model-based enterprise, and uh, that's one of the value uh, elements of model-based definition, which is the ability to reuse that PMI um, through downstream and parallel development processes. And there's a number of areas that uh, we've excelled in within Siemens, so a number of applications that we support. So those are both Siemens and, and non-Siemens-based applications, but I'll touch on a few of them here in this presentation. So uh, the first one would be around the tooling and uh, tooling design and analysis. Or analysis, sorry. So if you're a, a tool designer or an NC programmer or a manufacturing engineer, you can begin to work on on this before the design is actually complete. You can do that because you can you have access to that data without having to create a drawing to uh, to to begin your process. So version analysis with the Siemens VSA product is a tool used to simulate manufacturing and assembly processes and predict the amounts uh, and causes of variation. Um, VSA uh, leverages the NXPMI data for direct use within this variation analysis solution. And uh, you can analyze geometry, product variation, tolerances, assembly process vari variation. So in the form of a sequence or assembly attachment uh, definition, uh, you can analyze tooling and measurements. And that extraction of that PMI data results in a reduction in analyst time of uh, up to 50, uh, we're seeing about 50% in improved accuracy. There is a mold wizard concept design for NX that is also uh, um, uh, accessible um, for, or sorry, leverages PMI for simplified workflows. So there's this concept of using uh, 2D symbols that can be inserted to represent 3D standard parts in a mold assembly. And at any time, those 2D symbols can be automatically replaced with 3D components, simplifying that tooling production. So these are just a couple of examples of how PMI can be used to enhance tooling and, and analytical uh, applications. 
if we look at uh, machining and part planning and manufacturing, um, the NX the NX CAM solution by Siemens also provides support for PMI driven machining. So PMI driven machining is automation, uh, automates the tool path creation and tool selection to reduce NC programming by up to 20%. We're actually seeing more than that depending on, on the complexity and the types of models that you're, that you're working with. Uh, the reuse of NX PMI dimensions, um, uh, PMI dimensions annotation in these uh, downstream applications uh, really um, leverages manufacturing knowledge within the machining process and uh, just represents yet another area where NXPMI supports the, the downstream reuse. Uh, inspection is another area. Siemens offers a NXCMM solution that automates the inspection programming by leveraging PMI on, model, on a model uh, and automatically creates inspection features, inspection tolerances, and inspection profiles. Um, it automates the inspection programming and has a, a button called or a, a function called link to PMI that automatically defines uh, all of the nominal inspection uh, data target points, planes, and joint uh, um, joint cross section curves that are required for CMN programming execution, and it's compliant with the DEMA standard. So this is a, another example where PMI can be used to, to drive inspection and uh, reduce the programming time for, by up to 80%. Another area to, uh, that we've invested in around supporting model-based definition is in the area of um, uh, the uh, what we're calling the NX Technical Data Package. So this was first introduced in January uh, of this year, and it's a, an easy to use uh, and fully integrated solution for generating technical data packages in NX. So the question earlier about what does TDP stand for, that's uh, that's the acronym there. Um, it provides uh, functionality to publish the industry recognized formats, 3D PDF, JT plus PDF. It also includes STEP, and it allows you to create, modify, save, store, and reuse technical uh, data package templates. So we provide a, a template environment that allows you to generate the layout for these particular um, uh, TDP outputs. Ultimately, this uh, this really helps to reduce or eliminate the reliance on 2D drawings and supports collaboration with supplier, manufacturing, inspection, quality, assembly, and others requiring access to 3D content. So this is really um, uh, ultimately um, something that will, will help to re reduce um, drawing production. It's also available in the context of um, a simplified viewers. So uh, the output for each one of these um, capabilities is uh, Adobe Acrobat for 3D PDF, uh, and uh, jt to go is a free viewer that's offered by Siemens, as well as, of course, our comprehensive team center visualization suite of tools. But uh, um, these are these are both um, solution sets that are readily available to viewers um, that are receiving these these documents. So I'll give you a quick example of that. Uh, I'll show you an example of how you can go and output one of these uh, NX technical data packages. So in this case right here, I'm just showing you a number of model views. If I go to my um, my publish export, publish technical data package, it's accessible there or within the NXP My Application ribbon bar, you can open up a publish mechanism. We offer two different flavors here that you can, you can output a 3D PDF or a JT plus PDF. A JT plus PDF is really a 2D PDF file with a JT file attached to it that can be opened within, like I said, our JT-based viewers. You've got templates to rep represent each one of those types, and you can specify the number of views uh, either interactively by identifying the views or specify based on some form of filter. There are options around creating a password protection on the file. There's uh, options around accuracy and compression. You can also, within the context of the template, you can set a number of fields that prompt the user for information on publish. So you could either tie these directly to attributes on the template, so they populate, think of almost like a drawing format, or what you can do is you could prompt the user and they can indicate this. You also have access to all of the um, to attachments. So a technical data package is a, is a collection of data that represents the product. So I may want to attach a step file, a Word document, an Excel spreadsheet, what have you. Any document could be attached to that. I just click on OK. You can see it in real time here. It's creating a 3D PDF. And when it does that, uh, it creates a log file that gives you a, a breakdown of the settings that were used. 
And if I kick uh, or uh, click on the 3D PDF document, you'd see that it opens up in uh, Acuret, Adobe Acrobat Viewer. And uh, you'll see that there's a viewport that gives me a live preview interaction model of that data, as well as a concept called a view carousel, which is really just a, a list of thumbnail previews of the model views that can be used to uh, to drive and to define what's shown in the in the viewport. The attributes that I mentioned earlier are available to me in that uh, on the uh, the template. There are options around uh, adding content to be able to send this back to the source. So there's uh, there's interaction and uh, ability to uh, to pass information back. Uh, the step file that was attached is available to me as an attachment that I can open or save on my drive and, and utilize. And there are options that Adobe provides around um, changing the display slightly. I may want to change the layout, the color, the background, uh, those types of things. So you've got some control over the, the visualization and output options. Okay, so just a, I guess um, a couple of references here before I before I summarize. You know, this is a this is an excellent reference of a customer, Antonov, that um, that created uh, moved to model based definition several years ago and uh, developed a, a product that was completely a paperless project. Everything done within the context of uh, NX and Team Center creating uh, 3D annotated models. And it was the their first attempt to, to doing this, and it was extremely successful in terms of uh, um, uh, transitioning from a drawing-based process to uh, model-based definition. Hey, Dave, uh, we have a second question. Sure. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, William would like to know uh, if there is a standard data package that tells most common data types to include. Uh, a standard data package that includes, I'm uh, sorry, uh, that tells uh, a, a standard data package that tells yeah. most common data types to use, um, to um, include. Yeah, the the um, the technical data package that's produced, it can it, you can attach any files. There are some standards. There's a MIL standard 31,000A and a B <laughs> that um, provides a U.S. military standard that is that outlines, I guess, the types of data that uh, are typically applied to a technical data mm -hmm. package or could be applied to a technical data package. But technically, it is uh, really any documents, specifications that could be, be used to uh, define that product. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I, would, uh, I would take a look at the standard. I would, um, but uh, yeah, I guess I need a little more detail, I guess, if I do <laughs> to deep dive, but. Happy to provide my contact information if that if that helps. Great. Uh, this is another reference, of course, GM. Uh, GM successfully using NXPMI in production in North America, all new vehicle programs. And uh, I've seen tremendous benefits by moving, transitioning from drawing-based process over to 3D. Um, and so, um, again, production proven uh, um, is a, a significant uh to give significant benefit over the of our solution. So um, I, I just mentioned it provides a complete production. Uh, NXPMI enables the production of a complete digital definition of a product, with the 3D model, and uh, it's production proven. It's a very mature solution, as I mentioned. We have a long history of providing solutions in the space, and uh, we're driving driving force behind the uh, 3D annotation standards and uh, model based definition, model based enterprise initiatives. The NX Technical Data Package, while I just touched on that, is a fully integrated solution within NX and provides the ability to generate those technical data packages. Um, and uh, its model-based definition is very strategic to Siemens. So we're committed to continuing to deliver a high-value, high-quality solution. Um, you know, in terms of where you can find more information about NX PMI and model-based definition, there are a number of different sources. A great source of information is available by joining the NX design community. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll have access to all the latest blogs, the knowledge base where you can learn more about the latest release and increase your NX skills. There's also a dedicated discussion group exclusively for NX PMI and model-based definition topics. And so if you're not already a member, I would encourage you maybe to, to take a look at that and join. Um, but this is definitely an open forum for, for discussing those topics. So uh, I hope you found this information session uh, or the session informative and uh, I thank you for your time. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so okay. much, Dave.
Um, great job. I just have a couple of uh, little announcements here. Of course, you are always welcome to reach out to Saratech if you'd like more information on model-based definition. Um, the easiest way to reach us is just at marketing at saratech.com. Super easy. Um, if you have my contact information, you can also reach out to me. It's just first initial last name, A Paul at saratech.com. Uh, we'll make sure that your requests or your additional questions get to the right people, of course. Um, again, Dave, thank you so much for your time today. We always uh, really enjoy hearing from the experts over at Siemens. Uh, our next session is going to be on October 3rd with Richard Ben Walid. Uh, you may have spoken to him on our support line. Uh, he's a great uh, applications engineer here at Saratech. Uh, and if you'd like to uh, go ahead and register for that straight from our website, just like you did for today's session, that would be great. Um, and if you can't attend, that's fine. We will still send the recording out to you. Um, if you are ready to take it to the next level um, here at Saratech, we also offer uh, training and services. Uh, so if you'd like more information about that, just let us know. And please stick around for about 30 seconds after the session. Just let us know how we did today. There's going to be a uh, quick little survey. Uh, if you have suggestions for future sessions, that would be a great uh, place to put that as well. And we will be sure to follow up with you. Um, and with that, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, thank you so much for attending. And uh, we hope to see you at future sessions.